All right, so uh, as you can imagine, there will probably eventually be a point in your CSS where you'd like to use an image or some other sort of asset. For example, a background image. And I, in my snazzy 2017 looking website here, would like to put a little Miku uh, image in my background here. So I've saved this PNG file into source assets, okay? And I'm just like I would normally do, would like to use it as a background image. So I just go to my URL for my body background and it's relative path. So I go up a directory into assets and Miku PNG. So let's run our Webpack process and see what happens. Looking good so far. Oh my God, what do we have here? So error, module parse failed, unexpected character. So when you get stuff like this and it's very explicitly stated here, you may need an appropriate loader to handle this file type. Again, Webpack is uh, requiring in these modules for you. Um, and modules does not necessarily mean no JavaScript modules in this context anymore. It can mean anything really. Um, so what happens here, and this is part of the functionality in the uh, CSS loader, is when it sees, like I said before, imports or URLs, in other words, uh, when you're referencing paths to other files, it will try to import them as a module and not just leave it as some string, you know? Um, this is very important to understand. Um, and you, at first you might be like, why the heck would it do that? That's dumb. But there's a very good reason for this. And before I go into it, I will say that you can turn this off if you don't want it to do that. Um, but the reason being here is two things. One, by in importing your assets as modules, you now have the leverage and power that Webpack gives you through its loader system. So for example, we're just going to be using the file loader, but you can use the image loader for this, um, which will give you access to a bunch of features like uh, compression and resizing pictures. It's it's awesome. Um, but by doing this, you gain access to that. There's also the fact that, again, we're, we're, we're in development mode here, right? This whole source directory is just our source development files. It has no real bearing, really, on what our output directory is going to look like. And quite frankly, to a certain extent, you probably don't care because that is going to be your minified, can't read, uh, code that's optimized for page performance, right? You, you really don't, as long as it works, right? And it's, it's efficient. We don't really care in most cases <laughs> what the output is going to be like, right? So the fact of the matter is that this URL might not make sense. Your distribution folder might not have a structure where this CSS file is going to go up a directory and then go into assets and then go into here. But that's how it works in our source file. So that is the other main reason why Webpack is doing this. And you know, it, if you're a React developer watching this, it's kind of a similar concept where in the DOM, right? What allows React to be super efficient is that it basically takes over the DOM for you. So that's why you always see people saying that uh, manipulating the DOM outside of React is, uh, bad because you're basically defeating the purpose of React's inefficiencies by doing that, right? So same thing here. If you kind of circumvent this feature of Webpack to kind of bundle in all these assets and files that you're referencing, and it'll output these new URL paths for you, um, you're kind of, you know, wasting uh, the power here that you have by using Webpack. So better off to use it. It's definitely confusing at first, but trust me, you'll get used to it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, thanks to this error message, is we're going to uh, npm install file-loader. Now, like I said, you can do more research and look into the image loader and other things like that. Um, but for, for the purposes of this uh, series, I'm just going to use the file loader. Um, it's very simple. So once we have that installed, we now need to set up the loader configuration for it. It's very simple, just like the other ones, OK? so difference here is I'm testing now. Um, and of course, depending on the assets you're trying to load, you might want to change this up, of course, but I'm just using a PNG here. So definitely want to make sure I've covered that. And just for demonstration, uh, again, this is just regex. So, you know, there's nothing Webpack specific to this. 
um, you know. So what I'm doing here is, okay, we're looking for a dot, and then we want to either match, this is the like an or operator, we want to either match PNG or JPEG, possibly, in the future. And the dollar sign, again, is that this should be at the end of the string, right? And the loader I'm going to use is the file-loader, okay? Oh, and I totally forgot to mention this in the other videos, but if you are using Webpack 2, please be aware that even though we're, we're allowed to use this old syntax, that you must explicitly say file-loader, style-loader. In Webpack 1, you were allowed to use shortcuts and just say the name, and Webpack would assume that you're using a dash loader, okay? So quick aside there. Um, okay, so this is loaded up. So now whenever we import or require a PNG or a JPEG, we get this uh, cool um, functionality of now we're running even our images through Webpack, okay? And what the file loader is basically gonna do for us, it's not gonna do any like image compression or stuff, but what again, what I was referring to is the main difference here is it's gonna take care of what these uh, paths look like in our distribution folder, right? So I've enabled the loader here. Let's rerun. Remember, you have to rerun anytime you change your Webpack config. Looking good. All right, so we've built. Big thing to note here and to help you understand. Notice that in my assets now that Webpack has created for me, Yes, I have my JS files and these index uh, and these HTML files I'm building, but now you'll notice I also have this PNG file. Um, it also has a very crazy hash name, and we'll see why that's important in a second. If I refresh the page now, you'll see I get this lovely uh, background picture here. And let's go inspect my elements. So I'm gonna go up to my head tag. I'm gonna look for that global style. And you'll see now, what the heck, right? So in my globals, right, I'm referencing this path, right? Because it's a relative path from this file to my image, which is great because that's how Node is working for us. Um, but in here, in my actual page, it's substituted this file path for this hash name, which is where this files is, right? So again, Remember that when we're using Webpack Dev Server, it's serving this stuff in memory, but this this is what our eventual distribution output will look like, right? Um, so it actually, because the, the whole idea here is that you're not serving your source directory to the client, you're serving your distribution directory, right? So in order to do that and to take care of, again, these file paths, it's going, Webpack is going to make a copy of the file and put it in your distribution folder along with all your other stuff. And that way it can just reference the image by just doing this, okay? So that's what it does. It basically, the, the CSS loader in conjunction with the file loader will go through, see this URL statement. It knows it's trying to load an image. It will copy the image over and then give it a hash name so that it's unique and then replace that URL with the new file name. Awesome. All right, and you can even see in my sources here, we've got this PNG now. So this is really great. Um, and let's just look at one more thing here, right? So just like we did with styles, you can imagine that this is gonna get real old real fast, right? So let's make an alias for this. Um, we're gonna go to Webpack, Darn our aliases. I've just duplicated this one, changed the name to assets and uh, referencing the path source slash assets. And just to prove a point here, let's change this to images, right? So these don't necessarily have to match up. You can call whatever you want. So now in my global CSS, I can swap this out for images. And that's much, oops, sans typo, much easier. So um, restart the process. <laughs> All right. Oh, and now you see we're getting errors. And why is that? Can't resolve dot slash images miku.png. Hmm. Well, that's weird because we said we want to use this alias now. And I'm pretty sure the alias is right because we're using the same exact thing for styles pretty much. So why was it trying to look for relative to that file images miku.png? Well, this is a little tricky thing and I didn't realize it till just recently, um, but 
when you're trying to resolve files in CSS, and also this goes for preprocessors, right? When you're trying to resolve files in CSS, there's no concept of absolute paths, so to speak. There's just relative paths. So that's why this works. But when you do this, it thinks it's trying to, because it's always relative, it thinks that it's doing this, right? Regardless. So if you add a, I forget what these are called, uh, Tibla or whatever, whatever it's called. Um, if you add this in front of a path in CSS, Webpack will see that and be like, oh, I see that you're, you actually want this path to be resolved in a different, in a normal absolute way. So it will see this path. Let's save that. Okay. And now you see we've bundled correctly. And again, so I'm using this alias of images, which again has almost, you know, no naming relation to assets. And I come up here to my style tag, same, same thing. So just remember, if you're going to use aliases or resolve um, import, th again, this goes for imports, not just URL statements. If you're referencing file paths, since CSS is only by default, and that's just how it works, is relative, you have to explicitly tell Webpack, hey, I don't want you to resolve this like CSS normally would. Cool. So that's it, pretty much. It's a tricky concept to understand because we're not used to thinking about it this way, but um, once you once you start using it, you'll you'll see the power of it. Um, and again, feel free to go out there and explore other things like the image loader and stuff. So that's about it for this one.